Right guys, as I said in one of my earlier videos, I want to build a huge multiplayer. So to drive that we're going to need an AC source. Now as you know these x-ray tanks are DC out, but they've got cracking transformers in there. So I thought we might have a go at modifying one of these uh, brilliant German Siemens tanks to uh, give us our AC voltage that we need. Now the couple of the problems we're facing here is we can't just bring, we can't just take out the diodes and the doubler from this and feed our AC onto those terminals because the cables for these are rated in DC and they won't handle high frequency AC. I've tried before and they just break down. They just get corona and they get damaged with the like burning, the like track. So uh, we can't do that. So we'll get this cleaned up guys and then we'll uh, take a look at the problem of getting the AC out of this tank. Right, guys, so we've started to strip this back now. These five connections across the top here are the feedbacks for the high voltage and the tube current. You can sense the tube current on either side on each transformer. As you saw before, there's two transformers and they just use the low end of the secondary before it gets grounded at the centre point to insert a resistor and then they can measure the tube current. This is a removable short and the technicians will remove this and put a meter in here so they can actually calibrate the uh, tube current. We can pull that out, see? And I'll just put a, a current meter in here to get it calibrated. Right guys, we'll flip that board over and as you can see on the back there, those are the two shunt resistors used for measuring the tube current. Right guys, so we've got this cleaned up now then and we can see a little bit better what's under here. These are the primary connections for the two transformers and as you can see at the moment they're running them in parallel. These are the connections for the filament transformers. You can see there's four connections there. That's because there's two transformers. There's two filament transformers in these because there's two filaments in the tube. They have a large spot and a small focal, focal spot. So they activate whichever transformer they want to use. That saves high voltage switching, obviously. Then these are for the actual high voltage contactors. As you can see, there's three pairs. They're actually connected together, so there's actually only just three connections here. So basically what they do with this is activate either the front set of federals or the rear set. The center is common. So they'll just put 24 volts on this side or this side, depending on the one to use one or two. So that's so they can use two machines from one transformer. And they're obviously protected by an RC snubber, and that's down here at the front. There's two snubbers in there for each set. Oh, and we spoke about this before. This is the uh, high voltage feedback and the current feedback. Right guys, so we'll move on now then. I think the next thing to do with this is get it wired up, test it, make sure it works, and then we can move on to opening this up. Right, so we've got this set up for a test now then, guys. So, looks like we've got a good one. So we'll crack on and open this up then. Right guys, as you can see we've removed this lid now. It was a bit of messing about but I wanted to leave the transformer in the oil you see. It's always better to leave the transformers in the oil if you can. See, once you remove the transformers from the oil, you've got a chance of getting air in those windings. Obviously the oil will drain out and then they'll get air in there. And that can be a nightmare to remove. And you might think, oh well we can easily just pull a vacuum on it again and um, expel the air. Well, it's not quite that simple. In the factory, what they do with these, they pull a vacuum and then they actually get the transformer tilted at a 45 degree angle and then they vibrate it. So it's not that simple, guys. So if you can avoid it, then avoid taking the oil from the transformer in the first place. If you do have to take it out, guys, whack it in another bucket of oil while you're messing about doing what you're doing and then straight back into the tank. And obviously, yeah, uh, you could pull a vacuum on it at that point. But like I say, it can be difficult. If I'm doing a small transformer, for example, a dental head, I'll sometimes actually just crack the case and everything in a bucket of oil. I mean, I'll take one of these big totes and I'll put the whole thing under the oil and crack it open and then just scoop the transformer into another um, into another container. Obviously, avoids any air getting in in the first place. Right, guys, so we're going to pull this back up now, out of the oil, and we're going to desolder these capacitors and diodes, therefore removing the voltage doubler out of this unit. So then we'll have a straight AC output to drive our voltage multiplier in the future. Right guys, so we've stripped out all the stuff we don't need in there, we've removed the doubler and all the extra wiring and stuff. So all we've got in there now is basically is the, the two bare transformers. We'll wire those together and we'll tie that to ground, the centre tap, 
Then we've got an output for the top of the tank, which will be our AC output. We're going to take the lid that was stripped off this tank earlier, and we're going to strip that clean. And then we're going to use that as a template to cut out a perspex lid. We don't want an aluminium lid on here because that's going to be at ground potential. And with this being high frequency AC, it's going to try and couple to that lid, cause us more problems. And as a double bonus, we'll be able to see those beautiful transformers. So we'll do that now, guys. Right then, guys, we're about finished on this conversion now. So we've gone from DC to AC. These are all the parts we removed from this tank. As you can see, there's quite a few. This is the finished transformer, guys. As you can see, done a few modifications. We've added a perspex lid, as I said earlier, to stop the coupling, and also some ceramic feed throughs for the same reason. So now this is still centre tap ground, so it's still bipolar supply. But now we've got an absolutely wicked transformer to drive our multipliers with. Right guys, we'll take a look at this running then. Right, we've got 15 centimetre gap on there. Let's crank it up. Hi guys, fantastic transformer. So you'll see a lot more of this guys in the future as we move forward to our multiplier project. Thanks for watching guys, take care.